Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just bow your heart this morning and think upon those last few words that there will be no one loving Jesus more than me but I will love him the most. He has shown me the most mercy by preserving my life. He has shown me the most mercy by saving me. I was a wretched sinner. He chose to die for me. What an utmost demonstration of love. He gave himself for me. And Lord, I'm confessing this morning that no one will love you more than me. I will love you the uttermost. I will love you the uttermost. Think about it. How much do you love God? Do you love him more than position? Do you love him more than your power? Do you love him more than your children? Do you love him more than money? Do you love him more than your job? Think about it this morning. He loved you. He gave himself for you. His life he gave to you. Have you even surrendered the wholeness of your life? That's how we know whether you love him the most. Have you been able to surrender your finances to him? It's yours. It's my money. You cling on to it. Do you not love your children more than God? Do you not love your spouse more than God? Do you not love your business more than God? Why don't you ask him this morning to help you? To help you to reconfigure your love in his heart. That you will love him the most. That you will love him the most. And Jesus gave us a clue. He says, if any man loves me, my father will love him. He will keep my word. He will keep my commandments. He will obey me. And if he does, my father and I, we will come and make our abode in him. Maybe that is why the presence of God in your life is short. But you can make amends this morning. You are in his presence. He's here. You can make amends and say, Lord, I'm going to love you the utmost. I'm going to love you the most. I'm falling short of your expectation, the expectation of your love. I will love you the most. I will obey your word. I will follow your injunctions. Nothing will stop between me and you. I will love you the uttermost. Father, give me grace to love you the most. Give me grace, Lord. I know it's not by power. Neither is it by might, but can only be by your spirit. Father, give us grace this morning. We come before you as your people. Give us grace to love you to love you the most give us grace thank you father blessed be your holy name please wave your hands to him and just appreciate him if you have made that confession if you have asked for grace just wave it and thank him because grace will be poured out to you thank you father hallelujah in Jesus mighty name we have prayed and the people of God say let's put our hands together for Cynthia and for the Lord hallelujah hallelujah praise God forevermore amen what administration hallelujah I love him the most I've made up my mind nothing is going to stop nothing is going to stand in the way of my love for him Hallelujah. A such moment causes us to think of the extent of our love for him. He loved us and gave himself for us. Gave his life. First John chapter 3 verse 16. First John 3 16. By this we know love that he laid down his life for us. And if he laid down his life for us, what should we do? For the brothers. You can't lay down your life for the brothers if you cannot lay it down for the Lord. That's the problem. 
It says, by this we know love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. And by this we know love. That he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Hallelujah. To what extent can you go even for your spouse? To what extent can you go for your children? Many will say, well, I can do anything for my children. I can What up for the brethren? That's the standard of love in the New Testament. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together once again for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. We welcome you all and online viewers. We thank God for your life and trust God that you also will love God and demonstrate that love by making sacrifices for the brethren. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Amen and amen. Wow. Every day is getting interesting. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Do you have challenges? Let me drop a word in your lexicon this morning. Out of every chaos of life, out of every problems of life, there are opportunities. So the word I want to drop for you is the word problemuity. Hallelujah. I thought I wouldn't need that, but maybe give it to me so that I can write it down for you. Glory to God. Let me drop that in your lexicon this morning. Because many of you are so bedeviled with problems. All you see is problems, you never see solutions. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God forevermore is a compound word that a writer put together from two words, problem. Hallelujah. So, problem to nitty. Can I have an amen? Out of every problem is an opportunity. Can I have an amen? amen? Can I have an amen? amen? The Chinese word for crisis consists of two words. Inside the crisis is also an opportunity. So when you are in a crisis, I want you to know that right within that crisis is an opportunity. And if you want to say, well, pastor, you know, these are just um, psychological stuff. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, give me 1 Corinthians chapter 10. The Bible says there is nothing that has happened to you that is not common to the brethren. Give me verse 8. Hallelujah. Or you can even jump straight to verse 10. Jump to verse 10. Hallelujah. Yes, 11. 12. And 13. Yep. No temptation has done what? Overtaking you. That is what? There is no problem you are going through that is not common to man. There is no crisis, no temptation, no crisis you are going through that is not common to man. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond your ability. Can I have an amen? amen. 
But with every temptation, with every crisis, with every problem, it will also provide where? The way of escape that you may be able to endure it. The way of escape out of that crisis is within the crisis itself. The way of escape out of every challenges of life is within the challenge itself. Stop looking outside. The grass is always greener on the other side. Look inwards. That's the challenge. Out of every problem, there is an opportunity. So stop looking at the problems. Focus on the opportunities. Look deeply within the problem. The way of escape is right there. Hallelujah. With the temptation, it will also provide the way of escape. The way of escape out of every financial crisis is within that crisis itself. Stop looking elsewhere for what is not lost. Whenever you go through challenges, buried in the midst of that challenge is the way of escape. In that problem lies the opportunity for you to break through. Hallelujah. Friends, listen to me. I've encountered this several times in my life. Whenever there's a crisis, it may tarry for a while. But you know what? The way of escape will surely show up. Stop looking, jumping around for what is not. Look deeply within the crisis. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we are grateful to you. Thank you for that man and that woman that you have brought this word to. Because I never pre-planned this. You just threw it into my spirit. Thank you because you will open their eyes to see the way of escape. In the name of Jesus. I say, Lord, you will open their eyes to see the way of escape. In the name of Jesus. You will open their inner eye to be able to see the invincible solutions within those physical problems in the name of Jesus. That we open their ears to begin to hear the inaudible in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the people of God say, let's put our hands together for Jesus. I'm sure you can do better than that. Amen. This morning, by the grace of God, we are continuing with our series, Entering into Our Consolidation, the fullness of our consolidation. And by the grace of God, we are at the verge. We have cleared the grounds. We have seen what God is saying. We have looked at the context of that word that he has brought to us. And uh, we want to enter into. Hallelujah. That consolidation. Second Corinthians chapter 2. We we'll quickly read 12 to 17. And then we'll go to Zechariah 8, 20 to 23. And then we hit the ground. When I came to trust to preach the gospel of Christ, even though a door was opened for me in the Lord, my spirit was not at rest because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I took leave of them and went on to Macedonia. But thanks be to God, hallelujah, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us, say through me, spread the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. May the Lord use you to spread this fragrance in the name of Jesus. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, a fragrance from death to death. To the other, a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, like so many, peddlers of God's word, but as men of sincerity, men commissioned by God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. Zechariah 8, verses 20 to 23. 
God needs us to be the aroma of Christ. Needs us to yield and surrender ourselves. To spread, to be used to spread forth the fragrance of God. And as we do that, everywhere we go, in our various spheres of influence, then we begin to see these results. Thus says the Lord of hosts, peoples shall yet come. I thought I would have an amen. amen. Even the inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying, let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I myself am going. Tell your neighbor I am also going. In the name of Jesus. 23. Many peoples and strong nations shall come to see the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, these are the days, ten men from the nations of every tongue shall take hold of the robe of a Jew, saying, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. May the presence of God abide with you. May his presence be resident in you. Everywhere you go, may his presence accompany you. In the name of Jesus. This promise, this prophetic word represents four dimensions of growth. Four dimensions of growth. And this morning we'll be looking at the first dimension. Zechariah 8 verse 20. The first dimension. Read, let's give it to me in the KJV. The KJV. Thus says the Lord of hosts, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities. Hallelujah. This first dimension I've called the dimension of random growth. The dimension of random growth. Hallelujah. Why is it random? I'll give you five reasons why they are random. It is random because the Bible says there shall come people. <laughs> Glory to God. Thus says the Lord of hosts, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come people. It could be man, there could be woman, there could be boy, there could be girl, there could be young, there could be old. But the Bible says there shall come people. Shout hallelujah. So that is the first reason why it is random. Because it is not exclusive. It is random. There shall come people. People, men, women, young, old, boy, girl. There shall come people. Could be white, could be black, could be yellow, could be brown. It doesn't matter. And that's the first reason why it is random. Hallelujah. I said people shall come to us. I said people shall come to us. In the name of Jesus, men will come. Women will come, boys will come, girls will come, the young will come, and the old will come. In the name of Jesus. Because he says there shall come people. People. Glory to God. The second reason why it is random is because they are going to come from many cities. Not just one city. They're not going to be predictable. Not just one city. They're going to come from many cities. Hallelujah. The inhabitants of many cities. They're going to come. They're going to come from Lugbe. They're going to come from Kubua. They're going to come from everywhere. They will come from Lokoja. They will come from Kaduna. They will come from Gombe. They will come from Yobe. They will come from Ijebu. They will come from Lagos. Can I have an amen? amen. Your market shall not be limited. Your jurisdiction will not be limited in the name of Jesus. That's why it's a dimension of random growth. People shall come, men, women, young, old, boys and girls, and they will come from many cities. They're not going to be limited to just the city of Abuja or the location of Jai. No, they will come from many cities. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. I'm excited because your customers will know no bound. Your customers are not just going to come from your locality. They will come from every city of the country and every city of the world. In the name of Jesus. It's random growth. 
not limited to boys or girls only. When we started this ministry 17 years ago, men were more than women. Now the statistics has changed. Hallelujah. I'm not even too sure. They say traditionally, there are always more women in church. It has never been so for PPA fan. Can I have an amen? Can I have an amen? But we are entering into the dimension of random growth where one will not be more. There will be more men. There will be more women. There will be more boys. There will be more girls in the name of Jesus. And they're going to come from all the cities, from many cities. Shout hallelujah. Number three, it is random, random growth. It's the dimension of random growth because they are coming from all over. To see what is going on. Give me verse 20. My apologies. They are, it is random because they are traveling from different directions. Cities from around the world. Give me New Living Translation of verse 20. New Living Translation. They are traveling from different directions. This is what the Lord of Heaven Army says. People from nations and cities where? Around the world. They will travel to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Many years ago, a few years ago, not so many, we began to have people like NK. Then when Marriott came in, she was a French major as well. I told her, I said, one day we are going to be having a French service. Hallelujah. Glory to God. She said, Pastor, I said, yes, you will. Now she's working in the French embassy. Can I have an amen? And in the days not too long, in the days ahead, you will see the nations of the world coming to worship here. In the name of Jesus. Because we're in the season of random growth. We travel from all cities around the world. Not just limited to FCT. Not limited to Nigeria. But from cities all around the world. Shout hallelujah. I see that you don't believe it. Glory to God. You don't need to believe it. God has spoken it and it will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. Because we will walk at it. Shout hallelujah. Number four. It is random because they are coming all over to see what is going on. That just some of them are just going to say, let's go and see what's going on. Give me the message, verse 20 of the message. The message of verse 20. They just want to come and check us out. Let's just go and check out what's happening there. The message from God of the angel armies, people and their leaders. Hallelujah. People and their what? Their leaders. We come from all over to see what's going on. Glory to God. They will say, let's just go and check them out. If something is happening in that place. Let's just go. Let's just go check them out. That may be their intention, but the Lord will draw them to himself. In the name of Jesus. That is why it is random. So let's just go check out what's happening there. Just check it out. And then the Holy Ghost will arrest their hearts. Shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Number five, it is random because they are not done with coming. Amen. Amen. The scripture says they will yet come. It is random because they are not done. God is not done. Give me back the new ESV. It says peoples and nations will yet come. Peoples shall yet what? Come. Hallelujah. They will yet come. Glory to God. Now let me explain to you what that word means. Yet. Shout hallelujah. Because the KJV also emphasizes it. It shall yet come to pass. People shall yet come. It shall yet come to pass. Hallelujah. From my favorite dictionary, Merriam Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, the word yet means besides. In other words, besides those who have come, many are still going to come. Can I have an amen? It also means even at a future time. Yet means even. Even though boys have come. Even though 
men have come. Even though women have come, many will still come. I say many will still come in the name of Jesus. The word yet means on top of everything. Despite the fact that we have them from French, we have them from British, we have them from everywhere, on top of that, people will still come. I say people will still come in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Yet also means up to now, so far. Yet God is not true with us. Shout hallelujah. Up to now they are coming and they will still yet come. In the name of Jesus. Yet also means continuously up to the present. I have not made this up. Go and check Miriam Webster's dictionary. They are all meaning of yet. How one word can make a difference. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. It means continuously up to the present. It means nevertheless. Nevertheless, we have men from all the nations. Nevertheless, we have men and women, boys and girls, young and old. Nevertheless, they will still come. Shout hallelujah. Random growth. Glory to God. I said glory to God. It also means irrespective of what God has done so far. I said they will still come. In the name of Jesus. Yet means they are still on their way. Some have come, but God is not true with us yet. In the name of Jesus. And friends, I want you to know that God is not true with your business yet. You are struggling with market, but now market has come. And yet more market is coming. More customers are coming. I said you will have more than enough. Though you have clients, but more clients are coming. In the name of Jesus. Because it shall yet come to pass. Random growth. Random growth. People are here. Yes, they will still come. You have customers. Many more customers are coming. You want private sector clients? They are coming. You will have them and then you will have government clients. You will have quasi-government clients. Shout hallelujah. It means there will be universal access to our church to your business, to your endeavors from all realms and walks of life. In other words, from every sphere of human endeavor, men, women will come. Young and the old, they will come. It means from every nationality, they will come. Because we are precious people's assembly for, for God is not one that makes a mistake. From all nations, precious people's assembly for all nations, universal access. When the season to begin to enter into the fullness of what God saw right from the beginning and the foundations of the world, shout hallelujah! Welcome on board. I say, Welcome on board. Put your hands together for Jesus. Isaiah chapter 2, let's read verses 1 and 2. Giving us five reasons why it is called random dimension of random growth. Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow into it. How many nations? How many nations? All. But it's contingent upon the fact that the mountain of the house of the Lord is established. Hallelujah. When you in your business exalt the mountain of the house of the Lord, then all nations shall begin to flow into it. When you stand for righteousness, justice, and truth, all nations will begin to flow into your life. Can I have a big amen? amen. Can I have a bigger amen? amen? Our church is accessible to all men and women, young and old, boys and girls, 
because we are precious people's assembly for all nations. And not just the Yoruba nation, but the Jod nation, Ibera nation, Igbo nation, Arewa nation, and all the nations of the world, French, British, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. I said, praise God forevermore. Now, I will do something. Amen? If you are ego, rise up on your feet. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Now, I will break down this ego thing. Within the Igbo nation, there are tribes, true or false. How many tribes are there? Ebuka, which one is your own? Austin, which one is your own? Pardon me? Central Igbo. Ebuka, your own is minor Igbo. Hallelujah. Can I have an amen? Within the Igbo nation, there are tribes. Amen? Praise God. Let's cover it with Igbo nation. Let's put our hands together for them. Please be seated. The Arewa nation should rise. Arewa nation, everybody from the north, north central, north east, north west, rise, 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 rise. Benue, Kogi, uh, it's not my fault. They put you in. She, she wants to identify with Yoruba nation. They put you in the north. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amongst this Arewa nation, I'm using north. We have how many tribes? Many. Okun Oboda. Ijebu is there. Uh, Cynthia. Eh? Bachama. Idoma. Yoruba. Yoruba, Okun, Tiv, Tarok, Kacham, Igala, Bagi, Hallelujah, yes, bro, Gia, yes, Igala. Ma, Ma at the back, you, Idoma, TV, Okun, Okun Oboda, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, you, Igede, Igala, Sis, Onye, Kogi, ah, is that it? Tell me the tribe. Is it Ugori Magongo or Ebira? Uh, Ebira. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Praise. Let's put our hands together for them. It's, look. Now let's talk of the Yoruba nation. Yoruba nation rise. Yoruba nation rise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay. Yoruba nation. Yes. Ondo, what's the net? What's the dialect? Is it Kale or Ondo? Ondo, Egi, Lokili, yes, Lokili choppers. They chop Lokili dog. Ilori, Idori, Idori. Okay, that's in Ondo state. Idori, Niawo, yes. Ijebulunwa, Amo Ekolunwa. Akure, what's the tribe of Akure people? Akure is Akure. Ekiti. Kete? Awori. Those are my people from Badagri and Co. Yes? Ijeburu nwa. Omo yemi. Okunwo. Ah? Ekiti. Ekiti kiti? Eh? Akuri. Ekiti kete. Eshe. Omo jeburu wawa. Baawa. Ekiti, Akure, Ondo, Egio, 
ijeburu nwa owo ekitikete lagos omo eko ibadan ah messi ogo kini so kile jelana kile fi joko ku sincerely hallelujah oya 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 oku o oku o ah oya eh e wo ni ti yo ilorin ayi ilorin kidi ofa oku o ofa o se oku o hallelujah let's put our hands together ah no don't go yet yes bro ah ekitikete okay egba bawa 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 oh okay ah i for fear let's put our hands together for jesus amen friends we just mentioned those three significant tribes do you know within those three there are many tribes ah okay minority they are protesting oh, yeah rise rise if i did not mention you, you don't belong to any of those three yeah rise 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 uh -huh, you see i uh, will also be counted they say i am also going they are saying they are also please clap for them don't sit down yet i want to know yes udu urobo urobo wayo wado urobo wado and now we we bastardize it and say now urobo wayo is urobo wado god bless you ora okay those are my agbo people ni agbo ora okay okay they're not yes Ogoja Cross River, praise God. What's your tribe? Eh? Yala, hey Yala. I know those are my Edward people. Yala, yes, yes. Urubu Wado, uh -huh. the same clan. Let's put our hands together for them. <laughs> Who is that? Edwin. Urumi Ishan, uh huh. Yes, gift. Ukom, uko, uko. Praise God. Isn't God wonderful? Let's put our hands together for ourselves. Because we are for all nations. Look at the mix. There are some churches you enter, you know that this one is Yoruba church. From head to toe, true or false? And there are some churches you enter, you know this is Igbo church. But we are for all nations. Amen. We are for all nations. I said we are for all nations. We are for all nations. And we have not started. We are just about starting. Because we have entered into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. So when we're talking of for all nations. And because it's random growth. People, is, our church is accessible to all men and women of goodwill to all nations, and also to all professions. To all professions. Hallelujah. To all professions. We have the nurses. We have the doctors. They are coming. We have the doctors, and more are coming. We have the nurses, more are coming. We have the lawyers, more are coming. We have the judges, more are coming. We have the scientists, and more are coming. We have the researchers and more are coming. We have the businessmen and the businesswomen and more are on the way. We have the artisans and more are on the way. We have the IT gurus and more are on the way. We have the engineers and the technicians and more are on the way. In the name of Jesus, we have the mathematicians and the statisticians and more are on the way. We have the fashionistas and more are on the way. We have the hairdressers and more are on the way. Can I have an amen? amen? Please put your hands together for Jesus. Because from all spheres and all walks of life, they are coming. They are coming. I say they are coming. 
in the name of Jesus. And for you and your business, may your business become accessible. I said, may your business become accessible. May your products become accessible in the name of Jesus. Your business will not be a local champion, but a business for all nations. You'll be accessible from all the nations of the world. Your product and your services will be accessible for all men of goodwill all over the world. In the name of Jesus. That's what this dimension of random growth is about. That's what it's about. Hallelujah. Friends, listen. The world is your parish and your marketplace. And therefore, you must stop limiting yourself. You must stop limiting yourself. You must stop limiting yourself. That was the original plan of God for you and I. Right from the beginning through the covenanted blessing of Abraham. Amen. That was the gospel. The very first gospel that was preached to humanity by God. Is that the world will be your marketplace. Go with me to the book of Galatians. I'm not just speaking. Let's establish it in the scriptures. Galatians chapter 3, we read from verses 1 to 9. That was the gospel. The first gospel ever preached by God. To the man of faith. Oh foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? Is it possible to bewitch Christians? Hello? Hello? Is it possible to bewitch Christians? Are you sure? It's possible. If you don't believe it, believe it today. Oh foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you, ladies, did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish, having begun by the spirit? Are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was vain? Listen, when you became a believer, you dropped so many things. You were persecuted. Even before your parents allowed you to be practicing that thing. I know what some of us went through. You may have had it easy. You are not first generation. You are not Abraham. Hallelujah. Remember the family faith. You are not first generation. Your parents, you were born inside the church. For some of us, we are almost disowned. My uncle said to me, it's none of his children should walk with me because I'm mad. Hallelujah. Say, this thing has turned that boy's head. Don't walk with him anymore. He's, he's mad. I was told so. I went to service. I got born again. And I stayed put where I served because there was no home for me to go to. You've had it on a platter. So you suffer. Do you suffer so many things? And is all that going to be in vain? Will I not guard that jealously? But you've got it on a platter and you are not valuing it. Oh foolish Galatians. That's what Apostle Paul was saying. Hallelujah. And that's the reason why many don't value their salvation. You've not gone through stuff. You are not disowned. Shout hallelujah. He said they were begging you to come. They will even be bribing you with biscuits. So keep quiet. I don't want to go to church. I... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They did not use Koboko to chase you. So no wonder you are not valuing it. Let's read on verse 5. Oh, foolish Galatians. Does he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness, know then that it is those of faith. Who are these what? It is those of faith. Who are the sons of Abraham? Verse 8. And the scripture foreseen that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. He preached what? Preached what? Beforehand to saying in you shall all the nations be blessed. That was the first gospel that was ever preached. 
This is the gospel. It was preached to Abraham. And what was that gospel? In you shall all the nations be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. That was the first gospel that was preached by God to any man on earth. It was first preached to Abraham. And what's the gospel? In you, all the nations shall be blessed. Verse 9. So then, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Hallelujah. Your blessing is tied to your faith, friends. Your consolidation will be powered by your faith and your faithfulness. So then those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Hallelujah. So that was the first gospel that was preached. That in you, all the nations, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So the, your, the world is your parish. The world is your marketplace. That is where you ought to operate. So stop seeing yourself as a local champion. Stop seeing yourself as just, well, family, Columbia, lawyer, who knows, who knows me? I'm just, let me just stay in my little corner. No! That's not humility. That's stupidity. In you, all the nations, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God wants to bless the nations of the earth through you. Shout hallelujah. You know the things that go through my mind at times. I wonder whether people really understand what the gospel is about. When I look at the advertising budget of some churches, I'm like, are these guys, do they know what the gospel is all about? Apart from the mainline churches, I'm yet to see any these modern day, so called modern day Pentecostal churches who spend money anyhow, build an hospital. Build an hospital and dedicate it. Say, yes, bring your money, pay a little. If you don't have money, it will be subsidized. I'm yet to see. Apart from the mainline churches, the Catholic, the Anglicans, and the likes. And yet, our budget for advertisement every month, some is 50 million of people's, of people's sweat and blood wasted on advertisement. What are you advertising? Are you Guinness? Or are, you, are you tobacco? 50 million budget a month. Can you imagine what that can do? Build an hospital. Adopt an hospital. Equip it with drugs. Let all pe poor people come there to be treated and become... Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Is it Jesus we're advertising? Does he need advertisement? Why don't, it, why don't the transformed lives be his adverts? He wants you, the aroma of Christ, to be his advertisements. We must stop all this nonsense that we are calling church. We must stop it. We must stop it. Hallelujah. To what end? If one life is saved and transformed, let that life become the aroma that will spread the light in his area of influence. Whom are you competing with? Whom are you competing with? What matters is on that day, enter into the rest of your master. You faithful. Listen, that's all that matters. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's go back to Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. This is the gospel that in all, in you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. That is the first gospel ever preached to humanity. It was preached by God to Abraham. And Christ came to purchase and redeem us back to himself into that promise by faith. In you, listen, let me read this in context. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, he preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, in you shall all the nations be blessed. So then, those who are of faith, they are what? Blessed 
along with Abraham, the man of faith. I've oftentimes told you there is no new promise God has given to humanity. When Christ came, Christ came to restore us to that same first gospel that was preached. Verse 10, let's read on. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law. For the righteous shall live by But the law is not of faith. Rather, the one who does them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the cause of the law by becoming a cause for us, for it is written, cause is everyone who is hanged on a tree. Why? So that in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, Christ became the bridge that restored us back and plugged us back into that covenantal blessing he gave Abraham. So that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Hallelujah. Jump to verse 23. Let's read it from the New Living Translation, 23 to 29. Before the way of faith in Christ was available to us, we were placed under guard by the law. We were kept in protective custody, so to speak, until the way of faith was revealed. The just shall live by faith. We ought to walk by faith and not by sight. So just like your consolidation will be powered by faith. Before the way of faith in Christ was available, we are placed under guard by the Lord. We are kept in protective custody, so to speak, until the way of faith was revealed. Let me put it another way. The law was our guardian until Christ came. He protected us until we could be made right with God through faith. And now that the way of faith has come, we no longer need the law as our guardian. Can I have an amen? amen. For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ. Like putting on new I hope you have put off the old. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Verse 29. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Shout hallelujah. What is that promise to Abraham? Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3. 12, 1, 2, 3. ESV. Now the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. We are going to verse 3. And I will make of you a great nation. Hallelujah. May you become a great nation. I said, may you become a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great. May you be blessed. May the Lord bless you and make your name great. In the name of Jesus. So that you will be a blessing. Hallelujah. So that you will be a blessing. If you don't become a great nation. If it does not make your name great, your capacity to be a blessing will be limited. Your capacity to be a blessing will be what? It will be limited because you can't give what you don't have. So it's your covenanted blessing to become great. Shout hallelujah. Greatness has been wired into your DNA through Christ. Because you are a son of Abraham, a daughter of Abraham. Greatness is part of your DNA. When an elephant gives birth, you don't expect the elephant to grow, not to grow, isn't it? Because it's in his DNA to grow. Shout hallelujah. It's in the DNA of cats to remain cats, domestic cats. 
and it's in the DNA of leopard, which is also a family of cats, to be bold and big. Greatness has been wired and written into your DNA. Shout hallelujah. It says, I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, so that you will be a... If your aim is not to be a blessing, you may short-circuit that DNA. The reason why it will make you a great nation, the reason why it will bless you, the reason why it will make your name great is so that you will be a blessing. If you have the wrong motive to be great, then friends, you ain't going nowhere. Because God cannot break his word. If your motive is not right, it won't work for you. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. But when you have the right motive and you understand the purpose for which it will make you a great nation, the reason why it will bless you and make your name great, then becoming a blessing becomes a piece of bread. Shout hallelujah. As we conclude on this first dimension, Glory to God. Where can they find you? If all the families, if you will be a blessing to all the families of the earth. Let me give you some practical tips. And then uh, we'll look at one more scripture. And we'll draw the curtain. Glory to God. Where can they find you? You must position yourself such that all the families of the earth can reach you and be blessed by you and your products. Number one, get on the internet. Have a website. Practical things you can do. Have a website. Somebody say, well, pastor, what am I going to put there? Just put your name. It can just be a one-page website. Put your name, your address, where you can be found, your phone numbers, and the things you do. Sephine. Must get on the internet. That is the gateway. That is the highway that God has created. Have a Google page. Whether you're a ministry or a business or an individual or independent marketer, you can open a website page. Can not be, may not be the one that one page. Get on the internet. Number two, have a Google page. And have an Instagram handle. Open a WhatsApp channel. That is the new marketplace. It's not too late. You can start today. If through you, all the families, all the nations of the world will be blessed. You must position yourself so that you can be a blessing through your services, your products, and even what you stand for. Shout hallelujah. So that when men check you out, they can find you there. Hallelujah. Friends, as we conclude this morning, the first dimension of growth is the random growth. It guarantees universal access to our church and to your business and your life endeavors. From every sphere of human endeavor, from every nationality, and from all walks of life, because we are precious people's assembly for all nations. Hallelujah. And we have said to us, we must expect men, we must expect men and women, young and old, boys and girls. We must expect them from all tribes and all nations to come into our midst. We must expect and call forth professionals from all professionals to come into our midst. Hallelujah. We must expect them and we must call them forth. Shout hallelujah. However, you must make room in your hearts for them. You must make room in your hearts for them. You must kill all forms of prejudices, tribal prejudices and sentiments. Thank God, like my illustration has demonstrated today, we're already from all nations. Hallelujah. We're already from all nations. No one tribe is dominant than the other. Shout hallelujah. We are all from one, all nations. But we must make room in our hearts to accommodate men of all sizes, of all ages, of all professions, and from all tribes and nations. Shout hallelujah. 
Shout hallelujah. Revelations, my last scripture, Revelations 5, verses 8 to 10. Revelations 5, 8 to 10. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayer of the saints. Hallelujah. Which are the prayer of the saints. If you don't want your prayer to be hindered, you must eschew all forms of tribal sentiments. All prejudices, you must kill them. Your heart, you must make room in your heart for all men of all ages, from all nations and all tribes. Hallelujah. These 24 elders had a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. You will connect the dots in a minute. And they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open his seal, for you are slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God. From where? From where? Every tribe, language, people, and nation. Hallelujah. And verse 10. And you have made them what? A kingdom and priest to our God. And they shall reign on the earth. Hallelujah. That word verse is kingdom and priest. Kingdom and priest. A kingdom is talking about kings. He has made us kings and what? And priests. And kings always have domains. King, domain. Kingdom. Can I have an amen? You are a king in your own right. Whether your domain is the domain of business, you are a professional, that is your domain. Whether you are an artist, you are a sports person, that is your domain. Can I have an amen? He wants you to be the king on your domain. He wants you to represent him on the mountain of culture that you represent. Made us kings, kingdom, and priests to our God, and they shall reign where? Not in heaven, here on earth. May you reign in your profession. May you rule in your work in the name of Jesus. In your sphere of business, may you be one reigning. May you reign in the waves of your profession in the name of Jesus. May you get to the top of the pinnacle of your profession in the name of Jesus. That is God's purpose. That is God's determination for us. He wants us to rule and to reign. Hallelujah. Has made you a kingdom, a king, and priest. Many of us are very familiar with being priests. Yes, we want to be a priest. We are the, just a spiritual angle. God wants you to rule physically as a king who over jurisdiction of your business, of your career, of your trade, and also as a priest, spiritually. That is what he has equipped you to be. One must not be over the other. Shout hallelujah. If you are concentrating on the physical and pay attention, pay no attention to the priesthood, wicked forces of darkness will have you. And when you pay too much attention to the spiritual, you don't pay attention to the kingship, you will suffer. There will be lack. There will be want. God wants you to be balanced. A kingdom ruling and reigning in your domain and at the same time a priest ruling the spiritual waves as well. Shout Hallelujah. So that you can reign on the earth. If you are going to reign on the earth, there must be a balance. One must not be neglected over the other. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. I said praise God forevermore. Otherwise, when you begin to reign in your kingdom, in your physical kingdom, in your sphere of influence, and they are trying to pull you down, you'll be running helter-skelter. But when they get there and mention your name and fire appears, they say, this one is a no-go area. And you see them, you still be smiling. Shout hallelujah. Amen. But in your closet, you are there, welding your power as a priest unto God. And if you concentrate too much on the priesthood, everything is prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting. What are you going to eat? You will beg. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Let's read on. So, when they come to us from different tribes, different nations, different kingdoms, uh, different uh, languages, what will happen? Verse 11. 
Then I looked, and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive what? Power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Hallelujah. Give it to me in the New King James Version. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. What is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing? Do you know that each of these constitute what the dividends of the seven mountains of culture will deliver to you? I've taught you that before. 2013, 2014. Hallelujah. Power belongs to where? Which, which mountain? Politics and governments. That is power. You need it. The world power and authority to rule and reign over the lives of men. And that's why nincompoops who are politicians will be ruling over you, professor. Because they are in the mount, holding the mountain of politics. Riches belong to what? The mountain of economy and business. Wisdom belongs to what mountain? Education. You need wisdom. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Strength belongs to what? The family mountain. The family mountain. That's the emotional well-being of you. You need that family of mountain. It delivers strength to you. A man will be beaten and battered at work. But when he gets home, he receives strength from his partner. Shout hallelujah. Say, don't worry. They're just doing their stuff. Let's enter into our closet and pray. You receive strength. Hallelujah. And honor is from where? Faith. The family of faith. The mountain of faith. 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 Where God is honored. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. What of glory? Celebration. Art, sports, and entertainment. You're celebrated. You receive the mountain. That's on the where glory is manifest. And then what of blessing? Which other mountain is left? The media. The media is used as a propaganda tool to spread false news. But God's desire for the media is to be used to spread the good news. Shout hallelujah. To spread the gospel of the good news. So that the blessings of God can be propagated upon the faces of the earth. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Friends, this first dimension is the dimension of random growth. And may you enter into it in the name of Jesus. May the spheres of influence, may our, child, may our door be opened to men and women from all walks of life, from various spheres of influence. And so shall your business also be in Jesus' mighty name. And the people of God say, Amen. let's rise up on our feet this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for this first dimension of growth, the dimension of random growth, where peoples will come, men, women, young and old, this first dimension, where nations from all tribes will come, whether they are Idoma, or Bagi, or Egba, or Ijebu, wherever, and from all the nations of the world, French, British, American, Japanese, Korean, they will come to our dwelling place, where they will come to our midst, to receive of your power, to receive of your glory, to receive of your strength, to receive of your wisdom, to receive of riches, to receive honor, to receive strength, and to receive blessing. Father, we thank and we appreciate you. Blessed be your holy name. We worship you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this dimension of random growth, because you are plugging us into it. Lift your voice and pray. And pray for our church. Call forth the men and the women from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. Call forth various professionals. Call forth the nurses, the doctors. Yes, the engineers. Yes, the researchers. The IT gurus. 
the social media gurus, the content creators. Call them forth. Call them forth. Call them forth. As you are doing that for your church. Yes, you are part of your church. So will it begin to happen in your own marketplaces. Call them forth from the east, the west, the north, and the south. Call them from all the cities, from all the cities of the world. Our doors are open. Yes, access, universal access to our church from all walks of life, from all the cities of the world, from all nations. Rakopa Sekata. Mezanda Raba Shikataya. Leria Pakose Praka Pazegata. La Raba Bazebo Raba Basegata Riabako Zegata. Mengo Laraba. Call them forth. Speak to the east, the west, the north, and the south to give up our children. To give up our children. To give them up to us. Mango Raba Sepro Kapazeta. Hey, Malaraba Sekata. Call for the professionals. Call them forth from the east, from the west, from the north. From the south. I can't feel you. I can't feel you. Open your mouth and pray. As you are praying for your church. As you are praying for our church. So will it begin to happen in your own business. In the works of your hand. In your trade. In your marketplaces. Call them forth from the east. From the west. The north. The south. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we call forth men from all walks of life. Yes, we call them the engineers. We call the researchers. We call the IT gurus. We call the social media creators, content creators. We call them forth. We call them forth, O oh God, to come and receive your power, your riches, your wisdom, your strength, your honor, your glory, and your blessing. We call them forth, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. He is able more than able. Take that song two times. To accomplish what concerns all me today. Hey, what concerns you is random growth. That's what concerns our church. That's what concerns your business. God is more than able to do it. He's more than able. That's the prophetic word he gave us. To handle anything that comes my way. He's able. He's able. able to do much more than we desire. He's able, he's able, more than able to make me what, to make me what he wants. That we may enjoy this random growth. Thank you, Father. All has bowed and all eyes closed this morning. You are here, you have heard the words of life. This first dimension is random growth. That's the dimension, the first dimension of growth he has launched us into by his prophetic word. Lord, we submit ourselves to the lordship of your word in our lives. Let your word rule and reign and have a free course amongst us. Your word says so mightily grew the word of God and it prevailed. Let your word grow in our lives. Grow in our hearts. Grow amidst us as your church. And prevail in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. All heads bowed still and all eyes closed. If you are here this morning, you are not yet born again. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to say yes to Jesus. I would like you to raise up your right hand to God wherever you are. Or you are born again, but you are not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit with the initial vocal evidence of speaking with other tongues. Please raise it up wherever you are. Raise up your right hand to God. If you are raising it, please step forward quickly. I would love to pray with you. Just come forward quickly, quickly, quickly. If you have your hand raised, hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. There's no one, shall we all just wave our hands to the Lord and appreciate him.